from Forbes Breaking News, not a good situation. Victoria Sparts warns we have no ability to survive the Biden administration. Thank you, Thank you Ranking Member Correa. And it says here, House Judiciary Committee holds a hearing on reigning in the administrative state. Now, the administrative state is obviously just another word, a euphemism, shall we say, for the deep state. There is no deep state. There's no deep state. There's no great spy network who takes down presidents here. There is no deep state, and we need to stop talking about it. The deep state doesn't exist. Okay, the spoiler alert, there is no deep state. Now recognize Ms. Sparks uh, from Indiana for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I definitely... And I, I've seen this woman before, and I, I like her a lot. I actually had several videos of some earlier you know, hearings that she was on, but my, you know, I, I lost and when the, you know, the files were corrupted when the computer crashed, but different story. You can tell that we have a significant difference of opinion uh, what the government was created for. From my perspective, government wasn't created, only socialist governments are created to provide for the prosperity and promise it that it can never fulfill. It always runs out of money. Unfortunately, our government did too. And yeah, this woman is she's totally based. And you would think I, I assume we don't hear too much about her uh, out in Indiana. But I assume that the left does not like her. She was actually go going toe to toe with some weirdo old black bald Democrat about uh, men and women sports. You know, you're talking about girl and women. This is just a common sense and science. You know, biological sex does matter. That matter, I wish it wouldn't. I would be really mean and tough, but I already am without it. As I said, you know, with Second Amendment rights, I'm good with it, okay? So maybe I'll go ahead and rewatch that video. But you have like a 60 plus year old man pretending, well, there's no men taking over women's sports like he's been living under a rock. But of course he hasn't. He knows exactly what's happening. It's part of the controlled demise. But I guess my point is here, they should be celebrating this person as a a woman and as b a legal immigrant but they are not uh, but our government did was create under constitution to protect rights to life liberty and property and unfortunately administrative state became very very oppressive and you are unless you are very politically connected and or wealthy you have no ability to survive in the current environment and it getting to the point that the little guy is getting destroyed and you have no ability don't tell me that any absolutely and they are doing that on purpose so we can make these arguments about like why are you doing this and it's not in the kind you know it's it's unconstitutional and there's so much overreach but that's the point that is why they're doing it any normal person has an ability to have an influence on executive branch and president to replace these judges unless you can give a couple million dollars to campaign of a president. You are screwed. And this is the reality what we have. So I think we have to really start thinking about how we're going to resolve that. And that's my question for the witnesses. We know that we're in trouble. Well, obviously, they don't want to resolve it. That's the th they they're putting their thumb on the scare. They're putting it their 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 boot on your neck. But. Uh, this woman's amazing. It almost makes me want to move to Indiana because she she gets it. And unfortunately, they will probably attempt to squash her like a bug. And I can see that happening in the next, I don't know, year or two. She's going to become a firebrand, a super popular politician. And they're going to say, oh, she's a far right conspiracy theorist. Big and oh, it's crazy. Trouble. And, you know, and I think Chevron doctrine discussion, it's a very serious discussion. I'm glad it's happening, and hopefully the Supreme Court will start doing some things to restore some imbalances. But what other things we need to do? Maybe, Professor Mascott, you can tell how we've gotten here and what are we going to do, because this is not a good situation. Well, thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I think, um, it's particularly since we're here uh, today talking about agency adjudication, I think for starters to look at some of the recent statutory changes in the explosion of agency power to bring enforcement actions within its own tribunal. One thing that often gets lost in, in the discussion, and you're raising some important points in your remarks, is how recently we have expanded internal agency tribunals. It wasn't until um, 1990, for example, that um, the SEC 
was able to bring and impose a lot of civil monetary penalties and important proceedings in-house. And then it was a few years after that that those penalties and the, those internal proceedings were applied to parties outside of registered entities. Uh, the Dodd-Frank Act in particular really um, explosively expanded agency power to bring enforcement actions in its own tribunal. And it's unclear really why that's necessary. One of the stated reasons tends to be efficiency, but we know from litigation that a lot of the other witnesses have been involved in here. That it, it's unclear why. No, we know exactly. It's to squash people. It's to usher in communism. It is to control everybody's life. So I guess that's the that's kind of how we got here. Uh, but I don't know how we're going to. Well, I have some, you know, theories on how we might be able to solve the problem that nobody's going to want to hear. And you probably can't say it on YouTube agency procedures themselves often take years to wind through the process. So I think um, as an initial matter, this uh, committee and Congress could go back and re-examine whether agencies should be imposing sanctions, lifetime bans, and penalties at all in their own tribunals or whether they should go into the court system. And if you are going to preserve agency adjudicative authority, perhaps require transparency. Agencies maybe should have to um, publish the factors that they use when they decide how they're going to engage in these proceedings. Um, but it really should be much more restrained, subject to the accountability of constitutional rights. And, uh, and I don't think accountability is going to happen within the agencies. I'm sorry to tell you. This is very, it sounds all good on paper, but it has to happen somehow in a different way. Mr. She's based. Thank you, based God. Dude, this woman is amazing. Carl, do you have some ideas? Well, I, you know, ultimately, I think you. Oh, uh oh, uh, I don't know. I do not know who this guy is, but he sounds like he's got egghead syndrome. He's gonna tell you about all the deep all this. Oh, oh. When you have these core issues, when you have, you know, the sorts of penalties that we see the SEC meeting out, where you permanently bar individuals from practicing uh, their profession, uh, where you ha where you see draconian penalties, these are these are questions I think properly should be decided by Article Three courts. Uh, I, I think, quite frankly, there's no substitute for that, and I, and I think Congress could go ahead and make that requirement. So we can start suing our agencies, correct? That's the only way to sue agencies for unreasonable <laughs> decisions? So what are we going to do? Well, it, it at least... Let allow people to do that? Or what are we going to do? Yeah, we should just stop the overreach. Well, you know, in terms of that, that at least... What is a recourse? What is it if you're a normal American? What is your recourse if you have unreasonable fines that happening? What is it, what is it going to do on unreasonable decisions? What are you going to do? You know, what do you have, Mr... Chernovets, you have some suggestion. What do you do as a normal person that, you know, goes through this process that there is no transparency and they can do whatever they want. You have no ability to influence. There is no trial. There is no jury. There is, it's really, there, the process is so insider driven and you have no ability unless you're well connected, you're in trouble. Even if yeah, and they want they always talk about freedom. Oh, we're gonna decriminalize drugs for freedom. Oh, we're gonna let you bend your baby for freedom. But when it really comes down to it, it's all very oppressive. If you're well connected and wealthy, you don't have a chance. Uh, folks in front of the SEC settle their cases 98% of the time. It's not because 98% of the people the SEC goes after are guilty. It's because they can't afford to fight all the way through the process for years and years and years and years on end. The agency beats them down into submission and finally puts a settlement offer on the table that they can't afford not to take because they're out of money and they're out of, you know, they want to get back to practicing their career uh, uh, and, and they're just not able to continue to fight for their innocence. That sounds like political thuggery. That's exactly what they're doing. They've gotten so big, they've gotten so powerful that they just beat people into submission, the FEC or the FTC or whatever, along with the, uh, all the way down to the college girls on the boardwalk who uh, are, are scared to admit that there's only two genders on camera because they've been beaten into submission, scared and bullied by the regime. It's all basically the same people coming at everybody from all possible angles. So I know I, th I think as long as these administrative adjudication apparatus are in place, that there isn't a lot of hope for people who find themselves, uh, you know, arrayed against the federal government in these enforcement actions. You need the independent federal judiciary as the intermediary between the individual citizen and the state. Thank you. My time is expired. I guess. Me yeah, and that's exact. I mean, in a roundabout way, that's almost exactly what 
Big DJT has been talking about for years. They're not coming after me. They're coming after you. I'm only in the way. So that guy, that guy was all right. Those other two weirdos, it was just word salad. But I mean, the only reason I'm watching this now is because I think this lady is pretty based and hopefully she can, you know, take some steps in the right direction. And, and she's, she's a little bit now. I mean, I'm so deep in, I'm sure she's really deep in too, but it's like, she's almost doing them a favor and asking these questions about how we fix these problems because to her and to me and to the regular Americans, this overreach is totally a problem, but for the establishment, it is the feature. It's not a problem at all. It's a benefit. 